Hi everyone, so I'm taking a look at another mini PC. This is a Core i5-8250U1 from Banggood that sells as a bare bones mini PC. So you're going to need an M.2 SSD which can be SATA 3 or PCIe and of course a stick of RAM. Now the good thing about this one, even though you can see it's quite small, it will also take a 2.5 inch hard drive. So you can use either an old spindle hard drive or an SSD that I have right here. And it does have also upgradable uh, wireless, which you don't normally see on these, which is probably the main reason why I picked this up. I wanted to see if it was any good too, but it turns out it is good. This model has good fan noise, good thermals, and the only real limitation is the fact that we've only got that one stick of RAM, so it's only running single channel, whereas this processor, if it had dual channel RAM, could perform a little bit better. But let's find out why I like it so much in this review. And inside the plain brown box that it comes in, you will find our power supply, which is rated to 40 watts maximum output, which is gonna be enough for this. It has that Mickey Mouse style plug, so very easy to source a replacement. But the box did come with an EU one here for me. So if you're from Australia, New Zealand, US, you'll probably get another cable, if not very easy to find one. You get a bracket here, of course, too, for the visa mount screws and some little little tiny rubber feet there for the bottom of the mini PC. So in order to gain access to the internals, you just have to remove the four screws that are right here. Afterwards, you would put rubber feet on. Now this is a bare bones PC, so I have to install some RAM and a 2.5 inch or 2280 M.2 NVMe or SATA 3 SSD. Now a little trick here, to get the back cover off, I found the easiest way to do this was to actually screw in one of the visa mount screws and then you just pull it straight up and then that plastic cover comes off quite easily. Otherwise, it's quite a battle to get it off. So you can see right here, we've got access to the single RAM slot. So unfortunately not dual channel, but at least of course we can upgrade the RAM because there's other ones out here that have the four gigabytes or eight gigabytes already soldered onto the motherboard. And we can in theory put up to 16 gigabytes. I don't happen to have one of those more expensive sticks, but I have one stick of A data right here that I'm going to install. And you just simply got to push it in, if I can get it on. Got the camera tripod in the way here. And a little bit tricky, because there's not a lot of space right here. But that is right in, and then clip it down. Now you can see the little tiny cooler here, and it does have quite a bit of copper all around the outside, so hopefully that's going to do the job. Now in order to install an SSD, unfortunately we have to flip around the motherboard. So there's just one screw right here, and another one over here that I have already removed. So once you do that, then you can just simply push along here, and flip up or move up the motherboard. So be careful when you lift up the lid because we do have some cables attached here. We've got SATA 3 cable going to the 2.5 inch hard drive bay which is right here. And then we have two cables that are going to some antennas that are placed on the lid. That lid is made out of plastic so that's going to aid of course the wireless range and reception being plastic there. The good news is here we can upgrade the wireless card which is great so we can install then for example, Intel's wireless AC9260, which is a gigabit wireless card with Bluetooth 5. The one that they give us in here is your super common wireless AC3165 with maximum speeds of about 400 megabits per second, that card. And right here, I'm going to install now, uh, you can either put NVMe SSD, but I'm going to go with a SATA 3 because that's what I happen to have spare. And you just need to slot this in here like so. So this mini PC has an alloy frame all around the outside. It's plastic on the bottom and the top. You've got a power button there with status LEDs. We have two USB 3 ports on the front, a Type-C USB 3. Unfortunately, it's not USB 3.1 with video out support would have been really good. And then a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack that does support microphones. Left and right, you will find these grills. On the rear, you will find a gigabit LAN port there, HDMI 1.4 A spec, sadly not HDMI 2, which I believe it should have. This is one of the cons of this device. Two USB 2 ports, the power port in, so that's DC in there, and then a Kensington lock slot. On the back is where you will find the two screw holes there. That's for the Visa bracket that I showed you, so you could mount this on a monitor or a television. So the width of it and the length is 13 centimeters and it's just four centimeters high. So very good, the size of it, nice and compact. And it's great the fact, of course, that it will still actually take a 2.5 inch hard drive as well, which a lot of them with this size would be skipping. So before we jump into Windows, I wanted to quickly show you the BIOS here. So it is unfortunately completely locked down to us. 
and that means we cannot undervolt and increase the power limits through the BIOS. However, we can do it with Intel's Extreme Tuning Utility. And in this review, I will show you how to do that. So we can undervolt a little bit, increase power limits to help boost the performance of the Core i5-8250 that we have here. And you can see the settings we've got available, just basic stuff like setting your boot order. So it didn't take me too long to get Windows installed, install everything like that. The drivers will all actually pull through from Windows Update. You're not gonna run into any troubles there. So that does make things really quite easy. So this is the OpenCL score. I'm showing you right now with Geekbench 4, this is the GPU. Not that powerful, so this is not an ideal mini PC for gaming, but as you'll see later on, you can at least play some light titles and get a decent semi-playable, well, playable actual frame rate from older games, at least like Counter-Strike League of Legends. So Geekbench 4 score, it's okay, but it's a little bit less than expected right here, and that is because it's only running in single channel our RAM, as expected, of course, because it's just the one slot. So there's the speed, so it's 2.4 gigahertz that it's running at, and you can install up to 16 gigabytes you can get with DDR4 RAM, and that's not gonna boost the performance at all. It's just gonna mean, of course, you can multitask. But I think eight gigabytes for most people should be sufficient. So that is, find the performance. It's actually really fast. This is a good kind of CPU, I think, the quad core that it's got in there. Now there are some restrictions with power limits and the thermals as I'll show you. So what I did manage to do was of course benchmark as well Cinebench R15 with 433 CB. But I increased the power limit as you can see right here. Now you probably want to set it actually a little bit lower than this but I wanted to push it to the absolute maximum here and see if I can get it to hold the highest turbos possible on all four cores that it has. So when it was stock Stock power limit, so the 15 watts is the just the power boost max that it has. And it held about 2.1 gigahertz across the four cores. Now, not that great really. But with my increase here and a slight undervolt, it was holding around about the maximum almost. So 3.34 gigahertz on all four cores. And that really does improve the Cinebench score. So from that 433 that I showed you, up now to 661 CB. Now this could be about 800 CB if they had given it another slot there, another sodium slot, we could have put dual channel RAM and then this thing would have been really quite fast, about the same performance as a Core i7 7700HQ that you get in a lot of gaming laptops. So I've got some spreadsheets here running and no problems with that, I mean edits and we do, it's gonna be fine for that. As long as you use an SSD, the performance with your typical mini PC, your general computing tasks is going to be very good. No problems. It really is quick for a mini PC. I find the performance there is very decent. Now the thermals I wanted to point out here because of that power limit increase, this happens. So you have to keep a close eye and get a good balance between the power limit and the thermals. So at 45 watts, it reached 94 degrees, as you can see right here. Sorry, the text may be a little bit small, but 94, that's not good. For extended periods, it did trigger thermal throttling on uh, one of the cores. So I recommend maybe set it to about 30 watts. At 30 watts, it's gonna get up to about 85, 88 degrees is the maximum, and stock temperatures, it didn't even get to 80 degrees. The thermals on this are actually quite good. It's doing a good job, and of course, the stock TDP that you have there. Now video performance for decoding, I have some sample files here and I don't wanna get really into too much detail because it's gonna run all of this perfectly fine. It's hardware decoding, HEVC, uh, H.2.6465 uh, codecs as well, no problems. Kodi as well, I do have Kodi, uh, where is it? It's installed and really fine, the performance you can get from this as a media device here for playing back videos. It's ideal because of its performance. However, I would have preferred the 4K 60 Hertz, but for movies, it's fine because movies are normally only 24 frames per second. So it doesn't really make too much of a, an impact there. In fact, I won't run this because there's no point. It's just gonna perform really well. I have already tested it. So Kodi performance, really good. Uh, kind of the best kind of performance you can expect uh, out of this particular hardware. So I wanted to move over now, we'll take a quick look at gaming performance, so you can play some light games, some light engine titles, as you'll see.
So this hardware is able to run these older light title games, Counter-Strike Global Offensive here, as you can see. The frame rate's hovering around the mid-70s. So this is just what you want, really, and all you can really expect from this type of hardware. And yes, of course, I did die pretty much just straight away. Let's have a look now at League of Legends. And as expected, 1080p on the high settings here. This CPU with the integrated graphics there from Intel is handling this game fine. Getting again about mid-70s there with our frame rate here in League of Legends. Now stepping it up to a demanding game, this is Project Cars, and you can see this is as far as that integrated GPU is really going to go because this is quite poor. We're only getting about 16 frames per second at the moment, down to I think the lowest I've seen is 10, so not ideal. You need a dedicated GPU for that. Good news is we can actually use one because if you look up one of those external mounts that I have, then you're able to run a proper GPU here via the MVME slot and just use an SSD 2.5 inch one for your operating system. However, you are going to have to mod the case so the MVME, the connector and the cable can fit through it because when you put the lid on, of course, there's no room for that cable. And so some cutting is involved if you do plan to run an external GPU. So I've gone back now into HW Info. I did reset it 17 minutes of gaming now and I reset the power limit most importantly because before the 45 watts is really way too demanding. So what are the stock temperatures like? when you push it hard, when you game and things like that. As you can see right now, it is very good. So we're gonna get maximum temperatures, I would say of always under about 80 degrees Celsius. And the GPU, you can see right here, that got up to 67 on the GPU cores there. So yes, under 80 degrees Celsius, this is very good. And you can't even hear the fan. In fact, it's not on at the moment. It is such a quiet mini PC with good thermals so this is really good. So if you're wondering about Linux support, this is the latest Linux Mint version, build and kernels and everything. And it's running just fine. So wireless is working, Bluetooth, everything, no problems. And the performance is really good with this particular quad core. All right, so as I mentioned in the start, the real handicap with this, of course, is just that single sodium stick we have in there for RAM. So you can only run up to 16 gigabytes, which is fine for most people. They are expensive to get that, but it's just the single channel. So dual channel, we would have got and squeezed a lot more performance out of this with the memory bandwidth, which would help out with things like 3D, if you happen to be editing and doing that. Now you can hook up an external GPU if you wanted to do this, if you did, want more power and you wanted to actually game on it, you can do this. I've got another video that you can see that uh, that should be popping up shortly here in one of the corners. Check that out and but you're going to have to mod this case because the problem with the cable routing is you're really going to have to cut out a little bit so you can fit the cable through it and not run into you know, any problems there because you try and put the lid on it's going to put too much pressure and you could end up damaging the cable on this right here if you were going to be doing that. Besides that, the real weaknesses of this, they aren't really much because the thermals are really good. The fan noise is almost non-existent. A lot of the time it's not even on. Performance is really quite good for what it is and how tiny this is. So for media files, for a file server and things like that, it's going to be great. However, there's no setting in the BIOS for it to detect when it's powered off its state and then when it gets power again, it'll boot back up again. So for a file server, you could use a remote switch and use this as, say, a server. But it doesn't have that option, which is quite disappointing. I would have liked to have seen a fully unlocked BIOS as well because that means I could have done the undervolting uh, through the BIOS and not have to use Intel's extreme tuning utility, but at least those options aren't greyed out to us. They're not blocked out like they are on, say, some of the Xiaomi laptops running this same CPU. You can't even adjust the, the voltage or the power limit, which you can do here. So if you can find a balance, which is somewhere around 28 watts or 30 watts, and the thermals will get up to about 90 degrees then, however, you do gain quite a bit in performance, especially when it's using all four of those cores because it will hold a much higher turbo because it's not being power limited. But if you keep it completely stock, it will have very good temperatures. So it's always going to be under 80 degrees C. You don't even hear that fan as mentioned. So really it's quite a decent mini PC. I would have liked to have seen a microphone on this as well. HDMI 2 would have been nice and even a micro SD card slot or SD card slot again would have been good to have on there but not essential, not exactly deal breakers. For me, HDMI 2 is what I would have preferred to have. Then I could run des my desktop with a monitor at 4K at 60 hertz and not a choppy 
30 hertz. It's fine for movie playback in 4K. It's going to be decent and good for that. It's just desktop, too laggy at 30 hertz. Thank you so much for watching this review. I hope you did like it. If you did, please give a like to this video. It helps out a lot with Google's algorithm. And also do think about subscribing if you are new here and you have not subscribed before. And I do hope to catch you back in the next one. Bye for now.